Hey you, I'm your nutrition coach. My name is Jackie Poole. Welcome to Happiness is a Healthier Habit. Let's get today's episode started. Hello, hello. Welcome to today's episode. I'm so glad that you are joining me today, like always. Today's episode is going to be kind of dear to me and some things that I've been really doing some research and just kind of really digging a little bit on how I felt and how I've been doing and how we can quickly spiral out of control when we're not paying attention to what our body is saying. One of the main things that I like to say for health and weight loss is all you need is two things. All you need to do is two things is to listen to your body because your body is talking to you all the time you know, it's having communication with you. And sometimes we don't listen to it. We ignore it. We mute it. We put it on do not disturb. And so that causes a world of wind of things to happen. And so number one thing when I talk about weight loss is how we need to listen to our body. And two is how to better our improve our habits so we can get the results we want so we can keep the results because weight loss can be super simple, super easy, but maintaining it is the hard part. And today's episode comes back to that number one step is listening to your body and seeing what is telling you. And so I'm talking about this today because I was feeling some kind of way a few months ago. And so I was not sleeping. I was having a hard time sleeping. I would go to sleep real well, but I would wake up like at two in the morning, one in the morning, and I would not be able to fall asleep. I was thinking of just things that were happening, what I had to do, the things that were going on. And so that can be very stressful. And then I would wake up and then do it all, do all my stuff. You know, I would work out, I would do all that, but I was snacking, I was doing all of this. And so this had been going on for a while. And with that being said, I started feeling these symptoms that I've never experienced before. And I remember driving to my son's bus stop right in the morning we take him to the bus stop and we're driving and taylor swift song came on and i don't remember what it was but i wanted to bust out crying i wanted to bust out crying and i was like what the hell (laughs) what is going on why do i want to cry and but i didn't i just kind of stopped myself and it really intrigued myself like why (laughs) And then the next day, my husband told me um, our friend's um, mom passed away. She had been fighting cancer and all of that stuff. And I just kind of hit me a little bit, but I didn't cry. And throughout the rest of the day, I felt like I wanted to cry for everything, for any video, for, you know, any song that I would hear. And this kept going on for weeks after, like just random. And I was like, what is going on? And I, of course, we Google, we search, why do I feel like crying randomly? (laughs) Why is this happening to me? And most of the things that say is, you know, depression. And so can totally see how me not sleeping, how me worrying about that, how stress is super high, um, me ruminating on my thoughts and, you know, digging myself in a hole and just not listening to my body and dealing with my emotions for whatever is happening. You know, that lack of communication with myself was leading me to this path. And 
I felt and I've been feeling, you know, for the the beginning of this whole year, I've been trying to tone up and lose weight and I've just not brought myself enough motivation, um, enough discipline, right? Because I would be snacking all the time because my sleep is not right. And even though my workouts were always on point, I'm always tired. I would just kind of sit in TV and, you know, watch for hours. And, you know, my husband would be like, it's okay. You know, don't, don't worry about it. Just relax. And I was like, it's not okay. It's not okay to want to cry randomly. It's not okay to just watch TV all day because even though I stay home, I have a certain routine with my kids, with how I go about my, you know, daily things that I do, how I go about preparing for stuff. And it was just not happening. So I really dug in through this kind of research on what you know, depression looks like, what are some of the risks, what are some of the tools. And I mean, I saw it all the time. Like after 2020, I used to work as a medical assistant in a pediatric clinic. And one of the tools that were given to teenagers were PHQs. And after 2020 and during 2020, right? Because that we were in the middle of the year when a little bit before, I think right on April when that started in that year, you know, slowly but surely, you know, you take your ticks, your kids to the well checkups every year and the teenagers, we give them this PHQ um, and they fill it out and it shows, you know, their risk. And obviously that skyrocketed that year and if you've been pregnant and you know had your gynecologist visits they also give you these types of questionnaires um just to make sure that you're doing okay for you know postpartum depression and make sure you you know don't want to hurt yourself and things like that so it's definitely an overall presence of you know, just kind of guidance of how you're feeling. Um, and it's definitely a tool that professionals use to catch, you know, onsets of depression. And it's very important to take those daily. And so also what I found out personally is you can do these on on your own. Of course, like the Apple phone, I'm an Apple phone user. I've been Apple forever, but you have that questionnaire on your phone. So if you got a minute, because this is how I've been checking myself and making sure I'm okay. Um, I've been working so hard to improve my sleep, which after three months of listening to my body, seeing how I'm being affected by it, seeing the results that I've been getting, seeing how I've been feeling these past three weeks. I finally lost like five pounds that I've been wanting to lose for a while. I'm in a good place where I feel comfortable with myself again. I'm sleeping better. I'm going to the bathroom every day. I'm waking up with energy. I'm like, it's been day and night on how I feel. And I'm not having those episodes where I want to cry randomly like that to me was like why am I wanting to cry and you know it really happens to the best of us and because I am so aware of myself I just in the past I just chose not to listen to what my body was telling me and so it's so important and crucial to always listen and have an open communication with yourself and so going back to the phone thing this is a pro tip for you if you have an iPhone, you're going to go to your health app and you're going to scroll down where it says all health data. And then you're going to scroll and scroll and scroll. You're going to have like all of these numbers and stuff. But towards the bottom middle of the scrolling, you're going to find a quiz that's going to give you like an anxiety, you know, little test and that's kind of like the phq that you can take it gives you take a questionnaire i recommend just taking it every couple months just to check your tone your attitude your set of mind i have that reminder on my phone as well and when 
filling these out there's also a way you can share with like your doctors and things like that so always keep that in mind for when you're doing you know self-evaluation self check-ins because they're so important and to have that open communication with yourself but also with your you know significant other a friend because this was so random to me and it got me a little worried about how I was feeling like it's not normal to just want to cry for everything and like I would be scrolling on my phone and I would see something that triggered me for whatever reason and I just like literally wanted to bust out crying and it was not hormones it's not PMSing like this went on for a full month where I just had no control of my emotions and so what I did is based on how I I've, you know, gone through my coaching program and what I've researched and stuff. I was like, okay, these are the supplements that help with this. And so I kind of gathered those. I improved my quality of sleep and how I do my routines. I focused on doing a little bit of more meditative things. For example, again, for like Catholics, it was Lent. So instead of taking something out of my routine, I added a little prayer. So in the morning, instead of, you know, when I went on my walk, instead of just listening to music and random stuff, like I put on a little prayer, a little calm, you know, Thing that's just very repetitive that would censor me into this type of calmness where I'm not worrying or thinking about what you know I have to do for the day and two also focused on meditative stretching focusing on breathing while I was doing that so I would do my walk and then I would do that and then I would start my day I would you know get up make breakfast and that's really helped me kind of center me where I'm not rushing all the time and pushing those deep thoughts that I have because I'm focusing on really calming my body and so that's what today's episode is about is building habits to reduce your risk of depression because it's very not talked about and I this is the first time that I've experienced something like this and it's because my stress level is so high and sometimes the things that we experience we feel like they're shameful like they're (laughs) the things that happen to us you know we don't want people to find out Um, we want to hide and so Also, that doesn't help when you don't talk about what's going on and share it with the people that are around you. And so when you think you're like the only one dealing with this, it's very egocentric that you have those thoughts and you don't talk about it. You don't deal with them. You just kind of hide them and shove them inside because you feel ashamed, you feel embarrassed, and it shouldn't be like that at all. So you know, from what I've gathered here, we're going to be talking about some of the habits that you can do to reduce any depression risk that you might be having. So what we're going to be discussing is some of the healthy factors and habits that are recommended to reduce your depression risk. And Actually, it's so funny because this is what I teach. This is how I preach to have your lifestyle because we have all of these things and sometimes we know what to do and we don't just do it and we need a reminder and a reminder and a reminder. So this goes hand in hand with what I teach in your morning habitual sunrise map um, on how to lose weight, how to build habits, how to change your mindset. So that is always available for you. And I just want to remind you that you can always schedule a free consultation to see how we can work together. But some of the habits are that are included in this, you know, factors about healthy living and lowering the depression risk include of course regular exercise good quality sleep and interacting with friends with acquaintances with loved ones and so 
Those three are super important to have, as well as sometimes genetics do play a small role in with a healthy lifestyle. Um, but I feel like it's more of the environment that you create for yourself. And so some of the things that were investigated in a new study published in the weekly journal in the Nature Mental Health uh, researchers from the University of Cambridge um, identified that there are healthy lifestyle factors that are very protective against depression. And so here are just a few of the things that they came up with as far that as triggering and increasing or decreasing your depression risk. Number one was smoking. Number two was diet. Number three was exercise level. Number four was sleep. Five was sedentary behavior. Next one was social connectedness. And number seven was alcohol assumption. And again, researchers during this study also used other biological markers such as triglycerides, which are the most common form of fat in your body and C-reactive protein, which is a huge indicator of inflammation. And just pro tip, if you're ever, you know, concerned about that, always talk to your doctor about that. But also, um, as somebody that is so against medicine, I try to do everything natural first. Um, medicine has its place always. But you can always just test for these things as well. If you're feeling that, you know, go to your doctor and, you know, yeah, they want to give you pills, but also ask for blood work. And these are two very good indicators, um, test their blood tests that you can get and see where they're at. Because again, in this study, they were used to indicate, you know, biological mechanisms of depression on the body and the brain. So we're just going to deep dive in just a couple of those factors that they mention because I feel like those are some of the most crucial factors and habits that you can really develop. And so one of the most impactful habits that you can really improve and have an impact was sleep and so improving your sleep quality not just how long but you know hitting that deep sleep hitting that REM sleep and having like that good quality restful sleep decreased your chances of depression by 22%. As well as, you know, of course, having a healthy diet. And when I say healthy diet, you know, we want to focus on whole foods. We want to really reduce our sugar consumption. We want to reduce, you know, our alcohol consumption, have that in moderation, you know, continue with regular physical activity. You know, that means going on daily walks or low to um, intensive cardio or weights, whatever it is, just move daily. A great recommendation that I love to give is to have at least 8,000 steps per day. If you're hitting that, good job for you. I am proud of you. You should be proud of yourself because movement is such a great thing for your body and for your brain as well as the time is changing there's going to be more daytime out getting out in the sun also makes such a huge difference on your mood and like I mentioned earlier before personally I've been going through a lot of stress a lot of things that are happening and sometimes we think that we can do everything right, that we think that we're doing everything right. I'm eating, I'm exercising, and the scale is not moving. What is going on? And so if our physical body is not match matching our 
mental and spiritual thoughts you know that change that weight loss that you desperately want is not gonna happen you know so definitely staying consistent um checking in on yourself like i mentioned earlier i've learned about those tests on my phone and personally i try to do them been doing them at least once a month just to check on how i'm doing obviously i'm not having those episodes anymore i did come close to you know researching maybe talking to a therapist um online there's always better help i think or um, talk space those are big ones i remember i did talk space a few years ago i think with um my second son or yeah my third son we a few years ago it was right before covid i was just kind of feeling down and if you have insurance you can plug your insurance in and i think each visit was like 30 dollars. it might have changed from now but that was i did that for like two months where i talked to this you know therapist for two two months once a week we scheduled something it would be in my i would be in my room and we we would do our thing so it makes it super simple but you know there's always again better space i think and talk space or better help so those are two of the ones that i personally researched and looked into doing and used before because i felt like it was necessary to talk to somebody outside of you know my husband or my friends or my mom so definitely something to check out but like I was saying when your physical self and your mental self are not connected changes in your body are not going to be happening and know when you are super stressed that causes inflammation in your body that causes those biomarkers like I mentioned the c-reactive protein those triglycerides you know always definitely increase if your stress is super high and so it's very important to manage that stress because it has a great impact and it's so tied together with how you manage it because your metabolism is involved in that when stress is really high it affects it as well as your immune system is affected when your stress is super high and that can definitely affect the risk of depression so that is something to think about when we are focusing on health but have a lot of things going on we have to be able to bring our physical nutrition our spiritual nutrition our mental nutrition together to see the results because it's not just one thing it's not just the other is putting our that whole perspective of those three pillars together to really tie and make a perfect circle to make everything work the way we want it to now if you have been experiencing these things before obviously like I mentioned earlier talk to your health provider go to a doctor see a therapist there's plenty of things online that you have access to the wi-fi and internet are a world of help as well as you know we talked about the seven factors that really you know affect that which were smoking diet exercise level sleep sedentary behavior social connectedness and of course you know your alcohol consumption so all of those things play a big role and it's not about changing everything right because that can cause more stress and feeling more overwhelmed but it's just picking one thing that you can improve you know whether it be walking outside more whether is you know you know what i'm not gonna have a glass of wine every day you know every even if it's just one glass maybe just choose one or two days to drink you know little things that 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 will make a big impact in the long haul so it's just starting with just little changes a slow start is going to make a big impact on having a healthy lifestyle with good habits and of course like I've said recommend you know having a very holistic approach through this and like I mentioned we can always work on this in the habitual sunrise map as well and what I like to say to most people is 
what you do most days. You don't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be on a daily basis. It doesn't have to be so rigid that it becomes so hard and you're so focused on that. It's just making live work for you finding out what you like finding the little things that you can change that can be incorporated in your lifestyle to not only make it simple but make it healthier for you so you know I just want to remind you that a happier you is definitely a healthier you Hey, thank you so much for listening and joining today. I hope you got a lot of value out of this. And I'm so excited to announce a special sale for my nutrition weight loss coaching services. As a female and mother of three boys who love a simple life and being active, I understand the challenges that women face when trying to achieve their weight loss goals. With focus on spiritual, mental, and physical nutrition, I am dedicated to helping my clients achieve real and lasting results. Take advantage of this opportunity to invest in your health and well-being with a personalized coaching program designed to help you keep the weight off for a lifetime. Take advantage of this and I can't wait to chat with you next time. Remember, happier you is a healthier you. Bye!